And, uh, a few years ago, one of the, the startups that Yobi got invested in was, had to do with carbon credits. And as some of you know how the carbon credit system works, this is a way for companies to tr try to uh, you know, manage their, uh, their carbon um, consumption, if you will. And, they've, uh, and, and Yobi was involved in that. So Yobi takes his passion and converts it into a lot of interesting things, uh, not the least of which is technology. And so without further ado, I'd like to bring Yobi up and let him tell you a little bit about what he's doing right now at Citigroup. Yobi. Hey, man. Thanks a lot. Dude, what's up? Uh, so uh, I have to apologize, but this is totally a flashback moment. Check this out, they gave you a pager, <laughs> you know? <laughs> this was just 10 years ago and now we got this. And you know, an iPhone 5 is coming out very soon and I'm saying like, this is how fast technology has gone in 10 years. 10 years ago, people were carrying this really crappy little thing around looking at like 120 characters. And a piece of paper. And a piece of paper in my hand, which by the way, I wanna tell you a quick story. Debbie, who's a dear friend, said, hey, I want you to talk to my conference. Okay. Until two days ago, she says, where's your PowerPoint? I said, I have none. And um, I said, where is it? And I said, I showed her this piece of paper. And I said, we're just going to photocopy it and give it, the, give it the door. She was vehemently, I think she was angry. <laughs> she was really angry because she said, you know, these people paid really good money to go and hear some content. You can't give them a piece of paper. And I go like, all right. So we actually, Debbie helped me put this together. So I apologize if it's, uh, you know, another thing I have to apologize for is I was, I was up till four o'clock this morning now doing lines of code, you know, li not lines of coke, lines of code. <laughs> There's only a one letter. There's only a one letter difference. <laughs> and I swear to God it was that, and I had to wake up for a 5 a.m. call with the UK, so I had one hour of sleep. So thank you for the Red Bull. I'm going to survive and do this, and I'll try my best. Quick introduction, uh, I'm the Global Chief Technology Officer, as you've read, Global Transaction Services. Give you a little background, because what I'm talking, going to talk to you about is scale. A lot of people here are talking about infrastructure, software, yada, yada, yada. And you go like, okay, what does scale really mean? I never knew what scale meant till I went to Citigroup. Had no clue what scale meant. Uh, I'll give you background. Recently, I've been made interim CTO also at another division of the bank called Global Enterprise Payments. Which again, you never talk, you know, when you do rollouts, when we do rollouts, it's 13 country rollouts, you know, and 13 country rollouts, that's just the beginning. You know, that's the initial rollout. So uh, that, the type of scale we talk about is big. Uh, so uh, give you a little background on the, on the thinking. There's a big revolution throughout the world. You know, the Arab Spring probably represents the most visible type of revolution. Uh, but the real revolution that I think about uh, is this revolution in mobile transactions and payments. So one of the things I deeply care about, one of the things in my charter, in my remit, uh, and I was talking to some new friends I made over at Wells Fargo yesterday, and I said, they, we talked about this, and he said, like, you know, I think it was Nick, Nick's over there somewhere, and, we, and he said, what's the biggest challenge in mobile payments? Well, the biggest challenge is fees are not going to go up. Fees are going to go down every time, and it's going to be consistently challenged. You're going to have to think about new revenue sources. You're not going to make your money on Internet arbitrage. For those of you who do uh, Internet, I mean interchange arbitrage. You know, the real thing that is so interesting is like there is only 1.8 billion bank accounts in the entire planet. You know, and there's five billion mobile phones. So, you know, it's kind of obvious. You go, like, talk about follow the money. That's where you want to go. So it's a very simple, you know, calculus for us at Citigroup. That's where a lot of the money, we're going to find a lot of that money overseas. Cash payments also. Uh, electronic payments are basically 85% of the world's transactions. And think about that, 85% of the world still go on cash, 15% only. Uh, 
are doing electronic payments. So I've been working, I've only been with Citigroup for a year and a quarter, uh, but I've worked with them for a while in various capacities in the past. When we try to do something at Citigroup, we say, okay, let's try to experiment. When we do, when we do experiments, it's not small. It's global, it's instantly global, instantly with a number of partners. When we decided we were going to go and think about this in 2007, first, you can see that we went everywhere from, it, from an executive NFC trial in, eight, in 2007 with AT&T to today, of course, you know we are the lead bank for Google Wallet. We've done, everybody talks about M-Pesa, said that's really cool in Africa, in Kenya. Well, we've been, in, we've been the back end of M-Pesa forever. Uh, so you can see the number of roll the number of experiments that we've done globally. And we think this is the year to scale. This is the year to scale big. This is the year to actually take all the learnings from all of this and turn it into real money. So because I'm not so smart, I tried to hire a bunch of people from McKinsey. I said, go figure out what the opportunity is. So McKinsey came up with this and told me that there was about Revenue potential of business to business for 284 billion and a flow of 389 trillion. Now, for a bank like us, flow matters because we make our money. It's not a secret. Banks make money on float. So when when money flows through us, that's a good thing. So this catches my attention. 389 trillion is the number for me. Uh, business to consumer, it's about 44 trillion. Revenue potential of about half a trillion. Consumer, not, you know what? A lot of people that I've met are totally into the consumer thing. The least interesting to me. The least interesting because it's only 11 trillion. And the revenue potential is only 71 billion. It's like not interesting at all, believe it or not. Although to me, I believe, and this is a personal opinion, this is not a Citigroup opinion, I think P2P will actually be the trigger to go and move you to B2B. Because people get used to it. People get used to the fact that you can transact money with a phone. I said, okay, I get that. So, but I said, this is what I said, I thought I hired the smartest people in McKinsey, and I think it was, they gave me the wrong numbers. <laughs> because my, my, low, my small division, and this is public information, you can go to, Google GTS City, I do about 368 billion in average liability balances. I, have about, I, I hold about 12.5 trillion in assets. And the amount of money I transact a day, a day is about three trillion. To, and on a good day, nine trillion. So simple math times 365, it's about one quadrillion a year. So it, these, these are very large numbers. I served 96% of the Fortune 5, world Fortune 500, not the US Fortune 500. I have 10 regional processing centers. These processing centers are the size of like, like football fields, actually three football fields, you know? And that's why we approach petabyte range. And they said, dude, that can't be that big. And you realize we're one of the few companies, banks, I mean, wherein regulators want to us to keep data forever. You know, we can't throw data away. We keep it forever. Because someday some regulator will waltz in and say, hey, can you give me the last 10 years of what? And they give you a certain account number and they tell you to go find it. Very hard. Now, I also have a bank license in over 100 countries. Actually, it's about 140. So that gives you a notion of scale. So I did my first mobile app, yay! This is like my first mobile app, and we released it to our clients. And people will say, wow, that's cool, man. You do a little mobile app on an iPhone. What did it do? Well, uh, six months, we've done a billion dollars in transactions, which is, you know, that's kind of, yeah, that's, one transaction, highest transaction on a mobile phone, on a little iPhone, guy moved 150 million. <laughs> so to just give you the thought of scale, you know, this was not a micro payment. 
you know, you know, it, it's like it's got lots of zeros behind it, you know. Um, it was, you know, there's a magazine called Global Finance, a little advertising for the hard, the hardworking people at City. We were given the best global institutional mobile bank award. Very proud of that. There's a lot of forces. You know, I feel, I pulled out this slide. I debated if I should show this to you because everybody here probably knows this already and probably will say, been there, done that, don't want to hear it. But, you know, digitization, ubiquitous connectivity, consumer empowerment, all this is happening worldwide from Africa. My, somebody told me, that woman, is she wearing hair curlers? And I said, no, I took that picture in Africa. And, and I thought it was a good picture. And obviously, I didn't do the right job. So, but the opportunities, again, is everything is getting, here's the key word, digitization of currency and information. More interesting to me is information and monetization of information. Information, if I was over at the World Economic Forum, is now considered to be, will be considered a commodity, a tradable commodity. It is already in some ways, but it's going to get a price soon, and I think it's going to be something that's going to happen very soon. Uh, you know, there's going to be increased access to financial services and big data analytics, which a lot of companies here are talking about. You know, I, I still struggle with because, you know, big data, I mean, again, I do petabytes leading to exabytes. So that's the background. What do I think about? I can talk to you about all the other things I think about, but I think mobile gives you an understanding of the scale of the things we think about. We think about a lot of other things in like big, everything is a big number. So, which categories will have the most important roles in mobile payments? KPMG, uh, apologies to my friends in Deloitte uh, and ENY. Uh, 